Today, I'm going to put together this crossover for a speaker kit I've done for somebody. And it's on a PCB, but not your typical PCB that most people are used to. It's on a CNC PCB that I cut on my own CNC. It's a little different than you're used to, like I said, but it works just the same. It's very functional. In fact, there's more copper on this board than most PCBs. So in some ways, it has an advantage when you're driving a lot of power into the speaker. And it's also easier to solder because the pads are huge. So watch and see how it goes and let me know what you think. All right, this is just a look at the board here. You can see it's a little different. That's the insulated side. And these parts here are from Solon in Canada. And uh, they're, they're 400 volt caps and air core inductors. I think that's the big one there is 14 or 16 gauge and the little guy is 18 gauge. Don't need anything bigger than that for the, um, the little one. I'm just stretching all the um, the leads out so I can get them on the board there <clears throat> and setting the inductor in place. Okay, now I'm going to hot glue everything into place. Hot glue, I just I find it works really good. Some people like silicone or um, you know some other kind of glue. This just works really well for me. I glue the inductor into place, um, but I also use a zip strap. This is because it's so heavy that if it takes a good hit or something like that, this just gives a really secure mechanical lock to the board. Um, I only use one, but on some big inductors I will use two. It kind of depends on the board layout and things like that too. This inductor here, um, the little guy, I'm going to put it orientated upwards and perpendicular to the big inductor. This is to reduce interferences between the two. Um, inter inductors can um, interact and, and raise or lower inductance depending on how they're orient orientated. And this one gets a zip strap as well, just to, because of its orientation, even though it's lighter, I want to really make sure it's solid. I wouldn't trust just the glue. Just gluing down more components here. These are the resistors going in. These ones are really secure. They're so light and get so much glue contact area that they're not going anywhere. Okay, now I bend all the leads down uh, out of the way um, to be able to bend the leads of the inductors up to scrape all the enamel off of them um, to expose the bare copper. If you look closely, um, depending on your eyesight and your monitor, you may be able to see the copper kind of showing up underneath the red insulation. Um, Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to solder these to the boards. This is a really big pain in the butt and something I don't like about Solon's inductors. They're not pre-tinned, uh, but there's nothing I can do about it, so I do it myself. And then I just lower the um, lead of the inductor in a, into the board a little bit to make contact. Here I'm just stripping some wire, getting it ready for attaching to the board. And I twist up the, the, wire, the frayed wires really tight so that it fits into the hole on the board. And I just am going to tin my um, soldering iron well before I get started. It hasn't been used in a while. And here I go. This is the part where it all comes together, really. As opposed to fine electronics, like if you're so used to soldering um, computer boards or something, um, this takes a lot of solder um, and a lot of heat because the leads are just thicker than... Especially the inductor leads, not so much the capacitor and resistor leads, but just the area on the board and the size of the leads just is a lot bigger than fine little resistors and stuff for computers. And there it is. Now I snip all the excess uh, metal off the back of the board just to clean it up and make sure there nothing will come into contact and short out. <clears throat> And now I'm just going to test the board to make sure all the open circuits and continuous circuits are working as they should. And, and the circuits that have a resistor in line roughly match the resistance that I expect. I could do uh, further testing, um, but I've already tested these boards, so I just want to make sure all my soldering is good. And that's it. 
that's the back of the board all cleaned up and ready to go and there's the crossover fully assembled and ready to be put installed in a speaker thanks for watching